Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about benchmark crudes, which is types of crude oil which are traded internationally on commodities exchanges. So, benchmark crudes, a type of crude which is going to be traded on the commodities exchange, so either NYMEX in New York or the London ICE futures in London, it used to be in the International Petroleum Exchange. These crudes have got a pretty fixed specification in terms of their density and sulfur content, and benchmark crudes enable buyers to make contracts either for spot delivery or for futures. And there are all sorts of markers around the world. The most famous two are Brent in London and WTI in America, West Texas Intermediate, but there's also Western Canadian Select, Bonnie Light, uh, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabian Heavy, and others. Now, the other crudes, which are not linked to the, directly to those crudes, part of those particular blends, will trade either at a premium or discount, depending on the quality and their location. Some crudes, for example, tend to have a very high premium. Others tend to have a bit of a penalty because they're either they're heavier or more sulfurous. So let's have a little look first at uh, what uh, density is. So density of crudes is measured by a formula called API gravity. Uh, API being the American Petroleum Institute. So API is 141.5 divided by the specific gravity, which is the density uh, in uh, relative to water, minus 131.5. So water has an API gravity of 10 and other crudes have, uh, lighter crudes have uh, API gravity is significantly higher. And here we've got two examples of crudes. The relatively uh, Chardonnay colored one is a light crude. Both of these crudes are from Texas. So the light crude has a high pre uh, premium to benchmark. Whereas the heavy crude, also from another field in Texas, that looks like Cabernet Sauvignon, has a lower value relative to benchmark. Now, drinking crude is a very bad idea, so please do not do this at home. So, defining crudes, light, medium, and heavy. So, super heavy is anything under 14 API. For example, Rubiales in Colombia. Heavy is 14 to 24 API. Examples are Maya in Mexico, Western Canadian Select from Canada. Uh, medium crudes, such as Ural's Blend in Russia, have 24 to 34 API. Light is 34 to 44 API, so those are the two main benchmarks, Brent and WTI. And ultra light, such as Kotak Condensate or Algerian Condensate, are over 44 API gravity in uh, in uh, in uh, density. You can see the specific gravity ranges decreases as the IPA, API gravity goes up. Generally, my industry tends to use API gravity. Other uh, places like the former Soviet Union tend to use specific gravity. This is a little map showing the benchmark crudes around the world. And the colors are the warm colors. The uh, amber, orange, and red are for sulfurous crudes, i.e. where they have more than 1% for sulfur. And the sweet crudes, the crudes that have less than half a percent of sulfur, very low sulfur content, are in the green colors. Again, dark green for heavy, light green for light. So WTI, which is located in Texas, is light and sweet, as is Brent. Whereas Maya in Mexico is heavy and sour. The Middle Eastern crudes, you can see here, they tend to be slightly heavier and slightly more sour. And Euros blend is medium and sour in, in Russia. And this is the portion of crudes by various uh, categories. So you can see here in OPEC that most of their production is medium and sour or heavy and sour. So their crudes tend to be, particularly from the Middle East Gulf, tend to be rather sour. Whereas non-OPEC, they tend to be lighter. They tend to be uh, sweeter. It's to do with uh, the source rock and also the reservoir rock that it's, uh, that it's reservoir in. Uh, crudes from carbonate uh, reservoirs tend to be a little bit more sour because of the presence of sulfate ions within the, the carbonate. And different source rocks obviously determine also how, um, how sour the, uh, the crudes are. And this is the production of the different types of grades. So um, you've got the, uh, the sours that are here. Uh, which uh, where OPEC is in, is in blue and non-OPEC is in, is in orange. And you can see that the light sweet is dominated by non-OPEC production. Sources from Platts, which is a major oil information uh, service. When you look at the volume plot, so you have API gravity, so that's the density of the oil, and the sulfur content from 0 to 4. And you can see where the main markers plot. So you can see WTI and Brent plot in a, in a light, relatively sweet space, although Brent does have a little bit of, uh, of sulfur in it. Urals is sort of in the middle, and an Arabian light, although it's actually medium crude, is here, and the Basra Heavy is located here, and WCS, Western Canadian Select, is located as being heavy and sulfurous. 
Now the size of the bubbles is the size of the production from that particular blend stream. If you look at North America, you see quite a split here. So you have Western Canadian Select, which is the tar sands from Alberta, which has been blended down with, uh, with lighter components from conventional fields, which is, uh, you can see, it's quite heavy and quite sulfurous. And then um, WTI, West Texas Intermediate, crews from the Permian Basin, which is very light and very low, low in sulfur. When you look at Northwest Europe, you can see how low in sulfur it is. The scales are all the same. So Brent is located here, 40 is located overlap with Brent. Now, since the Brent oil field has actually been decommissioned, the Brent blend has uh, been enlarged to include crudes from Ecofisk, 40s, and various other streams within the North Sea that are similar in terms of API and, um, and sulfur content. There was a bit of a problem towards the latter part of Brent's production because the, the uh, the crudes from Brent, uh, uh, the production from Brent was so relatively small that uh, some brokers were manipulating the system. So the International Petroleum Exchange decided to expand the definition of Brent. If you look at OPEC, again, there's a bifurcation. These are mostly Middle East crudes. You can see they're sulfurous and they're getting heavier. And these are mainly non-Middle East crudes, Bartram Algeria condensate here, which are lighter and also tend to be lower in sulfur. Looking at different prices. So this is a price graph from uh, uh, 05 to uh, 2018 of Brent, which is in green, WTI, which is in light blue, and Western Canadian Select, which is not in, uh, in, uh, in the purple, purple blue. So you've got a situation where uh, WTI has been trending at a bit of a discount to Brent, basically because of uh, the situation in America, where there's a local surplus of light tight oil due to the shale boom. Uh, WCI has to be delivered to a place called Cushing, Oklahoma, which is the main refinery center in America, and that is effectively a landlocked system, although it's becoming less landlocked with, uh, with export routes being, uh, being now brought online. Uh, so WTI has tended to have a slight discount to Brent now, whereas in prior to um, the early 2000s, uh, there was a, it was reversed. And WCS, Western Canadian Select, you can see significantly heavier than other two blends and has quite a significant discount. And here there was a brief pipeline outage, local surplus. So you can see WCS plummeted in value relative to WTI, which has been a big issue in Alberta, in Canada. So this is the differential between WTI and, and Brent. So prior to the light oil glut uh, in the, in the uh, 2010s, uh, WTI tended to be a little bit of a premium, you know, one or two dollars above uh, above Brent, and then boom, the glut happened. So this is back end happening, this is uh, Eagleford happening, and the first stage is the Permian, where you have a significant discount with uh, with local wobbles. Then the two started equalizing because the United States Congress legalized cruise exports. Prior to this time, in 2016. Uh, American crude could not be exported for some considerable time. I think the act was put in the 1950s. Uh, petroleum products could be, so you could export American gasoline and American diesel, but not directly crude. And then subsequent to that, the price differential widened again because of Permian mania. So extra supplies of very light oil from um, the Permian Basin in West Texas, New Mexico, which has uh, meant that uh, WTI has fallen back relative to Brent. Brent is traded internationally. is the main international market for crudes. So this is a chart from 2018. And yes, I wish all prices were just like that. This looks at all the different types of crude that are around. And the crude that's most valuable is Tapis from Malaysia. Very high API, virtually zero sulfur. That's the most valuable crude. This is Angola, which is uh, Girasol, which is uh, relatively heavy crude, but has low sulfur. China relative price premium because of obviously of all the local uh, markets. Um, and then Western Canadian select at the bottom, relatively limited market penetration and it's relatively heavy. So if you want to know more, the best place to go to is Platts. And they have this lovely graph called the periodic table of oil, which gives you all the different information about the different oil blends. So thank you very much.